All right, so I thought I would uh, supplement the cubics and graphing form video with some of the geometric principles uh, that underlie the process. Uh, there wasn't any calculus used in finding those um, relationships in the cubic. And so I just want to share with you, uh, I did a long time ago, but uh, now that we're all cooped up, and I figure I got time to do some of these videos, so taking the time to do them. So here's, forgive my art history. I, you know, stopped studying art in the third grade. But here's a cubic uh, and the, the side lengths, length, width, and height are as follows, x, x minus 10, x minus two. And we're gonna put uh, cubics in graphing form. Then what we're trying to do is trying to take four terms, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, and, and look at it from the, the interplay of less graphing terms. So we can get rid of the, we can get rid of the squared term by reshaping the cube, the same way you get rid of the linear term when you reshape a square or a rectangle into a square. So we're gonna reshape this into a perfect cube, although it kind of looks like one right now. <laughs> it look pretty much the same. Uh, but, uh, okay, so we got roots at zero, 10, and two. And if we multiply this out, we get x squared minus 10x times x minus two. Uh, when you multiply that out, uh, you get uh, x cubed minus 12x squared plus 20x. And we should get a little sense of what that graph looks like. Just a little trick of the trade. Um, this is end behavior. This is local behavior. Uh, the last term, of course, is zero, which we don't have to write. But when you're graphing polynomials, you want to get a feel for general shape. Then you read from right to left. So y-intercept is zero going up at 20 to one at that instant. You can prove that without calculus. Um, you can certainly get a feel for it without calculus. Uh, minus 12 X squared, it's gonna give it that concave down trajectory. Uh, and then X cubed eventually, eventually wins the day. And so you got your general shape, you know, just a general shape. And if we look at the roots, which are, zero, two, and 10, we divide by three, obviously I got a canned one here. You get a sense of the point of inflection, the, the concave down to concave up change occurring at, at four because it's the X value, the X value of the uh, point of inflection for cubics comes from minus B over three A. Minus B over three A is really about taking the average and reshaping that cube. And of course, this is gonna create some linear and constant terms that are different than the original. And you gotta do a little algebra, a little factoring to, to work that out. But let's just multiply X minus four cube. Uh, so let's take a look at what we get. So I like to do X minus four times, uh, excuse me, times x minus four squared. I really pushed this in my class, binomial squaring. So minus eight x plus 16. And then we got x minus four, 40 years of doing this. Yeah. Just multiply by x across and then multiply by minus four and put it in the columns. It seems to speed up the calculation a little bit. Mine, hope it didn't make any mistakes, minus 64. And so there's your x cubed minus 12x squared. Oh, yeah. That's what we had before. x cubed minus 12x squared. So what used to be two terms is now one term. And then if you want to go look at that, uh, how to put cubic in graphing form, I don't think I talked about completing the cube. Uh, but, you know, it's just one step up from completing the square, which is all about geometric drawings. So I'm assuming that that's out there somewhere in, in uh, internet land, but I don't think this, I haven't seen this, so thought I'd throw it out there, uh, give you a little better taste of uh, what's going on geometrically with that calculation. All right, that's enough. And uh, I'll post this and uh, as an addendum to the uh, cubic video.